You've probably heard her voice as you sing along to your favourite worship songs and you might even know her face, but we're about to get to know Taya in a totally new way through her debut self-titled album out this May. Let's dig a little deeper even because I'm joined by Taya right now. Thanks for joining me, Taya. Of course, Steph. Thank you so much for having me. It is lovely to see you and get to speak with you as well. <laughs> lovely to uh, speak with you as well. Now, I've got a little coffee here, so I'm ready for a good old chit chat. Is it coffee time where you are? Where are you currently? Well, we are currently in Bakersfield in California. Um, and it's about 7.30 p.m. So it's not so really I, coffee time for you. Not, I mean, I feel like I need a good Australian coffee. That's definitely something that, thank goodness in California, they have, they've got a few. Like, they yeah. do. You can find them. You just have to look a little bit harder. And I've often found if you find a good cafe in like LA or somewhere in California, it's usually being run by someone from Australia. Listen, you, you just listen for the Aussie accent. And exactly. Say, like good coffee yeah. must be close by. I know. Exactly. <laughs> so, which by the way, it is lovely to speak to you because anytime that you hear an Australian accent, you're like, oh, that's just a bit of home. <laughs> is that one of the things you miss most when you're away and traveling? Like the coffee, the accents, what do you miss most when you're traveling? Yeah, well, I I miss most that, um, you know, like Australian coffee shops, they know a batch brew. They even know like a cappuccino and it's going to be the Australian cappuccino, even though don't get me wrong, I'm here for all new experiences and micro <laughs> coffee and everything. But I do love a good Aussie accent. And I feel like even though Australia is big in its space, um, we just seem to have this innate ability to, as soon as you hear the accent, you're going to say, you know what? I know there's a connection here somewhere. I reckon someone's cousin or I went to school with someone and they went to school with my auntie. Like you just know that you're going to find some point of connection. Absolutely. Even if it's just coffee. Um, and and you're from Lismore, right? So uh, my our grandparents yeah. um, lived in Lismore, so I used to go and visit um, Lismore a bit. But that's where you're from, right? Is that correct? That is, yes, whereabouts? Uh, I, I like, can't recall was. specifically. They moved around so much. They were uh, missionaries and they did all sorts of things around. But I remember going for visits to Lismore, um, driving uh-huh. from Brisbane or wherever we were. So um, is your family still in Lismore? Yes, my parents are. Um, they are on the outskirts of Lismore. Like it's still part of Lismore, but it's Ginalaba. Yeah. And to be honest, it is, um, well, just a little fun fact. For my first music video for For All My Life, we actually filmed back in my hometown. Um, we filmed in the room that I started songwriting in when I was Amazing. 17. It felt like a cool little full circle in my parents' home. And, um, and to be honest, I'm a bit biased. I just love, you know, even the bar in Hinterland, which I know it's a stretch. If you know where I'm from and, you know, speaking to all our Brisbane, it's like, you guys know where Lismer is. You're like, don't claim Byron. <laughs> you live in Lismer. It's just fun to get to share, you know, um, where I'm from. Cause I'm, I'm proud of the area that I'm from. And I think the people are beautiful and it's, you know, it's a bit more of a chill environment as well. And so it felt really sweet to get to showcase that to the rest of the world. So, how how yeah. are your family with all the flooding that's happened there? I grew up knowing about the floods. Like, you know, every five years there would always be some type of flood. But I remember being, I was quite young when they put in the levee bank, which is, you know, the structure that's kind of trying to help let in water a little bit so that there wouldn't be this crazy overflow. And I know Brisbane, oh my gosh, my heart's been with you guys because you guys got absolutely smashed by the same floods as well. Um But unfortunately, we've all become aware that this flood that they had recently um, was like a one in 1,000 year or one in one 3,000 year. Like I grew up knowing 1974 was, you know, the mark on the telegraph poles. And I knew that was the craziest flood. And unfortunately, with this next, uh, this flood that has just happened, you know, about a month and a half ago now, it was 14 point two meters which is like two meters above that marker in 1974 um i'm i'm blessed that we've been that we grew up in Ganalba, so we've had we've always stayed in that area so my parents thankfully are okay and um my grandmother's in heaven so i'm i'm secretly thankful for that because she would have been completely stuck slash who knows what would have happened because she was in south lismo which is just you know it's the most flood prone city in Australia but unfortunately I think they might 
be just having the conversation now about maybe relocating the city center because you know even in i know you guys are still having quite crazy um rainfall so there was even another flood whilst people had just started just renovating started to clean up and, yeah yeah so it's my heart you know completely just goes out to the people of lismore and even though no one wants you know crazy times to happen it's it's beautiful what happens when you know people just rally together and they're like no what this is our community we love our community and you know to hear the reports that you know they put the call out that um the ses were you know inundated and just couldn't get to everyone and so then every man and his dog just hopped in like a little Absolutely. fishing boat and a jet ski and i think that's the beautiful australian spirit and For so sure. i'm proud of my Lismorites and um and I just pray that you know just praying that there's wisdom for the next um for the next season of rebuild because there's a lot to a lot to be done for sure absolutely it's been a really uh challenging couple of years for so many people um in your new album let's let's talk a little about the album <laughs> uh what kind of themes are you unpacking um in the album is it reflective of the past sort of couple of years that everyone's gone through or is this more an accumulation of um I guess your life's story because this is your you know your solo sort of debut project is it a build of all your life experiences or more recent things that you know people have been going through recently yeah I would I would say um I feel like it's a bit of a mix because I I used to songwrite when I was 17 18 um and then when I moved to Sydney at 21 I told my parents I'm going to Sydney to become a sign recording artist um, but I'm a worker bee and so I'm not really the CEO type. It's like, this is the vision. Here we go. So I was a bit ambitious. And then I just started working in retail and joined a local church and was a part of the youth ministry. So I stopped writing songs because um, at the time it was like, do I eat or buy a piano? And the food won out. Like I, I <laughs> It wise. usually does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like survival. This is probably wiser. So, um, but the sweet thing is my relationship with Jesus didn't, you know, didn't stop at that time. I was still having what I fondly call my JC time, just Jesus Christ and me and my devotionals and journals because I write out my prayers because I get a bit distracted sometimes. <laughs> and um, so when this, I knew this season was coming up, um, just to, for a little bit of context, the best way to describe kind of the seven years of, I guess, songwriting buildup, I guess you could say, was um the Matthew 25, I think it's the parable of the talents. And I felt like I was the servant that, you know, the master said, here is one talent. He gave five out to one and three to the other. And then he said, I'm going to go away. And when I come back, I would love you to show me what you've done with it. The one with five, when the master came back, doubled it. The one with three, same. The one with the one said, I knew you were such a stern man and like, you know, a hard master. And so I freaked out. So I just buried it. Here it is. I'm sorry. And then the master got really mad and said, you didn't even put it in a bank where it could, you know, gather interest. Um, you can now go, I'm going to take that talent off you, give it to the one that had five that multiplied it. And you can go where there's gnashing of teeth, which I'm pretty sure that means hell where God is not. Yeah. So not it kind of time. Fear, yeah I'm like, I'd rather stay with you. Um, it kind of put the fear of God in me. So no, I just felt like I'd been burying the songwriting talent and, um, and God's kind though. I felt like a season was coming, you know, to, that like pinnacle moment of like and this is where you're going to start writing songs again and um it was just it was just God's timing and so when I finally got to that that moment of okay this is going to be the Taya album let's work on this project in a sweet way it felt like even though I hadn't been writing for seven years it felt like I finally got to you know God in his timing and his kindness you know he works deeply but he works tenderly was just you know undoing the tap and it just felt like it just flowed out of there and you know maybe it was scriptures that needed to marinate in my heart and in my spirit a little bit longer than just writing something off the cuff and um that I think you know for example for all my life after we, we that whole process like it was the last song that we wrote for this project which is classic Jesus you know like 11th hour like and I again hadn't been writing for seven years so I didn't have a formula for this um so I had no idea what I was doing, but, you know, I, I just had a conversation with John Guerra, who's my producer. I call him John the Baptist. He's the best. <laughs> He's an artist in his own right. And um, also Hank Bentley, an amazing um, writer and producer in his own right in Nashville as well. 
he co-produced the track and we'd just been having a conversation about um you know my life up until this point what god had done and i think it's a god story where god's just like opening this door walk through like shutting this door let's go to this way and just you know being obedient and being willing to um i feel like i've been made to live out oceans time and time again where it's like you prayed this prayer Taya, so many times now i'm going to make you walk it yet again where you're going to have to trust me which is funny because we realized you know we had been having a conversation about where god had brought me to up into this moment the significance of the timing and then after we wrote the chorus it's all based on scripture which i just love because i'm like the word of god has way better <laughs> like so much more power than anything that i would ever say and if I'm just repeating what the word of God is and that's truth and that can set people free. And, um, and so I just love that this is a song I can sing for the rest of my life confidently because it's based on Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6, which is trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So it's kind of um, a mix, this album of it's just, I think it's just my response, you know, in view of God's mercy, we're meant to offer our lives holy and pleasing to him that is our true and proper worship and that is obedience and sacrifice and so i pray that um god will be pleased when he hears it i mean he's been in the whole process anyway <laughs> so i pray that he enjoys it but it's a it's a mix of testimony it's a mix of scripture um and even you know randomly like again god's kindness i got to connect with my primary school teacher at the last gathering that we would have in 2020 and it was um it was wild like she just looked a little bit her countenance was different and she said i've just encountered jesus and my family's encountered jesus through your worship music and i can't believe like you know the little tay that i was teaching in school was doing this and she was so lovely and we swapped numbers like a whole family did and we just reconnected and then you know 2020 hit and um and 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 i i mean i'm a human you know um so when you say like is it also a response to the time that we live in um perhaps perhaps you know sometimes unfortunately in the last you know two years it's held a lot of things for a lot of people a lot of loss a lot of hurt a lot of disappointment um perhaps even not just absence of something but what does it say in the bible like hope deferred makes the heart sick perhaps this major you know waiting and thinking we would celebrate and we would do all these things and so I do think yeah perhaps there's some songs and now when I look back on those songs and knowing you know when things are being scheduled to come out I think gee you're so kind God because you knew we didn't know and you know if I'm just being honest for a second like as a local community in a church like we're currently in a season of grief and devastation and just you know a broken place and and placing our lives yet again before god and saying you know would you breathe on it would you reveal would you make us holy god would you um purify and refine um because you care and because you love everybody and um it's just kind of wild the timing again just some a song that's coming out in a couple of weeks i'm just like oh, you're so kind god i didn't know that that would be the timing that you did and um maybe i'll let you in like a little sneak peek but that yeah. one's called getaway <laughs> Do it. That, one's, that one's called getaway and it was a little surprise when we wrote it it was kind of the end of the you know like the last little last push to get this album across the line of finishing you know writing six eighths of it last year in Nashville and I was with some friends that I had primarily written the rest of this album with and um it was it's just based on Matthew 11 28 29 30 which is when Jesus is inviting us to come and he says hey are you are you burnt out on religious things are you worn down are you lacking in peace take a real rest come walk along with me in the pastures of my presence you can be yourself and you can say what's on your heart um he already knows it all and it's it's just things like that where I'm like Lord you knew we didn't and you're just so kind and so my my prayer is you know um throughout the whole album that just 
that one of the 14 songs um we went old school <laughs> um, just that one of the songs would resonate with people either with the you know over the moments that they've had over the last two years perhaps the confession that they need for the next season or perhaps the balm that they just didn't know that they would need and and the crazy thing is um I'll just finish that story about my primary school teacher um you know after we connected a couple of months later um she tragically lost her son in a work accident and he was a couple of years older than me in in my primary school and high school and um and so one of the songs I wrote for her um it's called Glory Halia and it's it's honest and it talks about you know when we're faced with grief um and yet what is our confession as Christians there um, sorry, in, in the word of God, in Psalm 23, it actually says, like, uh, when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you fear no evil. And because we believe in Jesus, we believe he is our hope, you know. And again, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But because we have Jesus, even in the midst of grief, um, yet I will praise him. Yet there will still be light. And it may not be until I see Jesus face to face, but thank you, Jesus, for coming for living the most, oh, that'll make me weep, perfect life so that death has lost its sting, so that grief is fleeting because one day when we get completely reconciled and we get to see face to face, we will then know completely and we will no longer weep, we will no longer be in pain, there will no longer be any lack or loss. The whole preface of this, this record um, just before the world shut down, which we had the, you know, the craziest plans, you know, <laughs> we were like, it's going to be in 2020, like this is the end of 2019. It's like, we're going to go to Nashville, we're going to go to London and OC and great plans, you know, but then the world's like, Bleh. and it's like, and we're going to write this one on Zoom. So <laughs> let's go guys. Our whole which, lives went to Zoom. It's just so weird now. <laughs> I, I know. And like, you either love it or you hate it. I personally have to say thank you to the creators of Zoom because I have an album because of it and it's in my own words and own melodies because if I'd been in person, I think I would have been just the same, which is like slightly shy to raise my voice, which is so silly because I know I'm known for my voice, but I just struggled <laughs> to raise it in that moment. But it was just before we proceeded into writing this record. It was the last gathering we had as a church and I just said, God, I know this is what you're asking of me, but I need a word from you. If you don't speak to me, I can't do it because I have no idea what I'm doing. I haven't written for seven years. I don't, how do I even write with people successfully to finish a song? Like, I don't know. So um, it was in a gift moment. It was our women's uh, conference. And um, the gift ha happened to be like a little eye mask. It said the word awakening on it. So then I just wore it for 20 minutes during a free worship moment and Brookie was up there just you know playing and leading and um and I said God I'm not going to take this off until you speak to me because I I don't want to go without your presence and I don't want to go without you leading and um I felt like I wish it was audible um I really do but it was more like an impression and it was like honey that this was to be like honey that it was to be sweet palatable easy to digest and that as it goes down, honey actually has healing qualities that it would heal some deep things on the inside, perhaps wounds that people didn't know needed tending to. And so when I look back at even, say, scenarios of like who I was writing for or even the last two years and perhaps the way that maybe people are walking out of a season that they've just had with a limp or are grieving, like maybe is, you know, by the grace of God, balm. For hearts and it's not complicated I'm not a if you ask anyone that knows me and you you're probably like yes you're very simple Taya um very simple <laughs> like honest and like kind of that's what I would have said it feels like it's <laughs> just going to be a really honest album um like fresh and uh, real and I think that's especially what we need after the season that we've had I need to let you go Taya but quickly before you do do you have yeah. a favorite song I know that that's is that like you know picking a favorite child kind of thing do you have a favorite I, song what you're what are you most excited for people to hear 
I have 14 babies. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I think getaway is going to be a sweet little one. Um, but at the same time, oh, it's hard. There's oh, there's one called Canticle, which is just prayer liturgy put to melody. I think I had, that's going to be a secret little, you know, that little chorus is probably yeah. written to the church, I think. But kind of we made it a journey all the way through. And so I hope people listen from start to finish. If they, I don't even know if people do that anymore, but I love going I still like to, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but the last track, Sorry to Grieve You, God, kind of for me, I was learning to lament in different moments of 2020 and yet again. Um, and so I think that kind of seals it, just that whole journey and, and um, yeah, just learning to yet again come before God and, like you said, be honest. And it it starts with, like, I just want to praise you, God. And then it's like, and I just want to thank you because you've given me everything so I can even stand here in your presence and not get knocked down. And then actually at the end of everything, it's I just want to please you. That's my heart's desire. And then it kind of just finishes with these three sweet chords that sounds like a little music box, which is john guerra and his little special sauce on that one love so that. i love that well we're very excited to hear the album taya out on the 27th of may it was great chatting with you taya oh steph you're lovely thank you so much for having me my pleasure <laughs>